so what I wanted to start us off with is to ask you actually how you've arrived at that intersection of tech, national security, and competitiveness. Like, yeah, talk to us about how you got to yeah, that yeah. intersection in particular. No, thank you uh, again. Uh, it's an honor to be on your podcast, and I look forward to the conversation. Um, I mean, look, life happens really in some interesting ways, I would argue. Um, how I got to the intersection of AI and technology. Um, you know, as you mentioned, I worked for uh, Secretary Bob Ward when he was the number two uh, in the Pentagon. And he was a passionate leader about emerging tech, specifically AI. So we're talking about 2014 through 2017. This is before uh, most of us knew, even knew what AI is or what it stands for. Or, you know, even the people that were working AI were still skeptical we're going to make major breakthroughs because so many instances before this, we had the AI winter. And so people were still skeptical whether or not we're going to get to the next level of AI models uh, yeah. in this space. But Bob work, uh, you know, through his knowledge, strategic insights, uh, he was one of the leaders that I worked for that really put the AI and automation at the forefront uh, of the Pentagon leaders. And when you are the number two guy in the Pentagon, uh, that makes a huge difference. It pushes the bureaucracy beyond belief. And so I was introduced to AI and um, the importance of AI and automation in that space in, during that time uh, in my career. Um, but, you know, like what was happening at the same time in parallel is that technology, as you mentioned, was really moving into a center position as a source of competition. Um, and I think uh, Eric Schmidt, our chair, really coined the term innovation power uh, because, you know, we're, we're used to thinking traditionally about nations in terms of military power, economic power, financial power. Um, but I think increasingly innovation power with the technology at the center of that really becomes a predominant feature in how nations are competing against each other, how they're getting organized, what kind of financial um down payments they're making for capabilities for hardware software you name it and so you know as i mentioned life really happens in interesting ways i was asked to lead the ai commission that congress created from 2018 to 2021 uh and when you look back why congress created that commission was that they saw two so sort of like trend coming our way number one is in 2018 you were already hearing the sparks of why ai will be different than previous technological revolutions. People were talking in these great grandiose terms that is gonna be like fire, like electricity, like yeah. wheel. Um, and uh, everything that Congress was hearing from the private sector was that, you know, it's a, it's a really powerful technology, you know, and it's a, you know, general purpose technology with a lot of dual purposeness, as we call it. Yeah. And, and then on the other hand, when you look back in 2018 and 2021 is, I think this is the era in which there was a wider realization that uh, the China we got is not the China we hope for, uh, because what you see in, yeah. probably in the last year of the Obama administration, and I was there with Secretary Work and late Secretary Carter, if you look back at their speeches from 2015, late 14, 2015, people are already talking about a great power competition, you know, which was later coined formally in the national security strategy that the Trump administration adopted. But I think by late 14 and 15, there was a broad recognition that this is a different China than the one we have hoped for since the adopt since you know the acceptance of China in the WTO, and so I think at that point, um, you know, Washington and the national security uh, departments and agencies started viewing China in a different light. Yeah. Um, I think the national security strategy that Nadia Shadlow drafted and General McMaster so like provided that overarching guidance. Um, is a major document in this century because after many, many decades probably of viewing China as a, as a, as a country uh, that we should help with the rise because it will become a rational international actor, uh, finally that document really uh, turns the page in terms of how we view China. And from then on, you have all these other documents, which is like the how we, our structure works. That when you have the national security strategy, then the, the DOD has a national defense strategy, State Department has a strategy, and national intelligence um, strategy. Um, but the one thing I would say is that all these documents didn't have technology as a dominant feature. When you look at the NSS, and I was there with Nadia and General McMaster, 
we do mention artificial intelligence, uh, but it's still uh, because technology is happening outside of private. Oh, I'm sorry, because technology is happening outside of government. Uh, it is really hard to write a national technology strategy uh, from a government perspective. So I thought Congress stepped in and created the AI Commission, and we were fortunate to really work in a first in many, many years public-private model in which you have private sector leaders, leaders some of the major tech companies from Google, Amazon, Oracle, Microsoft, hand-in-hand -hand with former government officials and academic leaders as a commission to look at ways for how United States can stay ahead in the AI, and B, what are our national security departments and agencies doing with AI and what they can do more? I have to remind you that this is also the pre-chat GPT era in yes. which AI was still happening in small corners That's of right. each of the departments and agencies, but it was not a dominant yeah, uh, topic of large conversations reason. and everything else. And so we produced the major report in March of 2021, um, 759 pages, which is a really thick report for a congressional commission. Uh, but that report really kick-started a lot of things, a lot of investments, a lot of organizational approaches to how we should be approaching AI from a government perspective, right? And then I don't have to tell you that the post-chat GPT release, just you see an explosion of interest and attention and everything else we need to do as a government, as Congress, as a society, in terms of how we get ourselves organized for the AI era.